Hashimur, I surely welcome you because we believe that it's very important for us all to learn from the past for a peaceful future of the world, you know. Perhaps you already visited the museum and learned enough about the a bombing in this city. Uh, surely, I was here uh, 64, five years ago, and experienced the horrible time. Well, but you know, Fortunately, I could survive, and, and I just want to tell my story to more people of the world, and uh, I want more people to learn the horrible reality of that bomb, and I just hope uh, this kind of bomb never be used in any place or any people, never again. Uh, uh, we, the citizens of Hiroshima, that's enough, you know. No more people should experience such an outrageous weapon. Okay, as you know, there are still many survivors living alive in the city. But most of them don't speak English. <laughs> so fortunately, I speak a little English. <laughs> That's why I'm here. You see, uh, many survivors had uh, far more severe experiences than me, you see. Well, I experienced just a little part of it, this big uh, incident, you know. Yeah. And fortunately, I could survive, and, and I am still alive, you know. Thank Buddha. <laughs> Okay, a little about our city. <laughs> you see Hiroshima city, huh? You already know that it's a delta city with many rivers. Yeah, and surrounded with mountains and it's at the inland sea. Yeah, and railroad runs this way, Hiroshima station. Maybe you got on the train here. <laughs> we have all our coal stations. That's all. Two lines go north. Yeah. And the streetcar runs this way and that. <coughs> well, before the war, the population of the city was around 400,000. Mm -hmm. Four hundred thousand. Yeah. Middle sized quiet city. Yeah. Well, I was born here, <laughs> east side, at the foot of this small mountain. In nineteen twenty nine. I'm now eighty one. It's a long time ago. Eh? <laughs> yeah. And my family, parents and three boys, I was the youngest, and we were brought up here. Well, well, but uh, while I was in the elementary school, uh, the war to China started, yeah, China war, yeah. Well, almost the 
same every day. Still okay. But but in 1941, that year I graduated from the elementary school and entered the middle school in the city. Well, that year in December, the war to the United States and Allied forces started. As you know, Pearl Harbor attack. You know, that was very <coughs> successful uh, for us side. <laughs> we peace, yeah, and side. Uh, big, big, big tree. <laughs> oh, and my two brothers went to the war, in the Navy. But still the war continued on and on. And as you know, very soon we began to lose the war everywhere. Very bad. Yeah, 1941, two, three, four, huh? long war. My middle school days were full of the war. And gradually our daily lives became worse and worse shortage of all kinds of material. Yeah, so 1944, one year before the end of the war, yeah. <coughs> we were very bad around here, shortage of food. We were always hungry, you know. And that year, uh, we students were mobilized to work, work in the factories and no more schooling. And as you know, uh, in the summer that year, most of the islands were in the Pacific Ocean. They were occupied by U.S. forces. <laughs> and they immediately uh, began uh, the construction of air bases on these islands. And in autumn, they began the direct bombing to the mainland Japan, you know. Miserable. So, 1945, the last year of the war, things were very bad. As you know, on the 10th of March, Tokyo was flattened in one night, see? A lot of B-29 bombers, hundreds, hundreds of them attacked Tokyo. And in one night, over 100,000 citizens were killed in one night. Big air raid. Such big air raid continued to most of the big cities in Japan. Tokyo, Yokohama, Nagoya, Osaka, Kobe, Okayama. Walker. Most of the big cities in Japan were all flattened in one night. And many citizens lost houses and killed, as you know. Well, still Hiroshima was all right. Yeah. Uh, you know, there is a big city named Kure, about 40 kilometers to the southeast of Hiroshima. That's a Navy Harbor city, Kure city. Yeah, <laughs> those days uh, there were still some Navy boats, like aircraft carriers or cruisers were in the harbor. But they didn't have any more oil. They couldn't move even an inch. All the Navy boats had been tied to the beaches of the mainland or islands, see. Now these boats were all attacked by U.S. Air, Air Forces, and they were all sunk, and soldiers were dead. We could see many American planes going to Kure on this sea from Hiroshima, you see. And uh, those days we young students said, hey, American planes going to Korea again, eh? 
They don't come to Hiroshima. Why not? <laughs> oh, Americans don't think Hiroshima so important. Oh, well, happy boys, eh? Hiroshima was very important. Later we knew that. So those days, hungry and work, very hard. Yeah. And that spring was very bad in my family too. My father was dead because of an ill, see. Only mother and me were in the city. But you know, even the citizens of Hiroshima started to evacuate out of the city because of the bombing to big cities. You know. So my mother also left Hiroshima to my father's home country. I was left alone. <laughs> And that spring, I graduated from the middle school and, uh, and I entered the technical college in the city. But you know, still no schooling. <laughs> we had to continue working. Yeah, that was the situation of those days. Yeah, hungry and work. <laughs> but you know, from the 1st of August, our teacher told us, new students, you guys come to school for a while, <laughs> just brief schooling. <laughs> you guys need some study. <laughs> so we began going to school from the 1st of August. Six days after that, we were bombed. Well, those days, oh, our technical college located here, <laughs> yeah, south side, about two kilometers from the center. Yeah, and we stayed uh, in a dorm, dorm tree near the station around here. And we used to commute to school by the street cars. So that morning, August the 6th, we went to school on a streetcar, as usual, to our school. Yeah. But uh, you see, very, very fortunately, our school had started at 8 o'clock in the morning. How lucky we were. See. You understand what I mean? If our school had started, at 8.30 or 9 o'clock, <coughs> like these days, we must have been in the street cars and almost in the center of the city and maybe broiled in the street cars. So we were very fortunate, I think. So uh, at 8 o'clock, the first period, math class had already started yeah, in my classroom, which was on the second floor of the two-story wood building. And there were over 70 boys in the room. And I was seated in the extreme front row. I'm shorty. <laughs> <laughs> and my seat was in the in south side corner, this position. And there was a big window facing to the sea. <coughs> but you know, south side, north side, even in the same classroom, there was very big difference. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Bomb dropped here. <coughs> north side and south side. Who knows? I don't know much about uh, what happened about my classmates after that because I didn't go back to school after that. But, but uh, very recently, I heard about a, a student who was sitting in the north side. This guy got burned. 
half of his face and became unconscious. Uh, he had a very hard time. Fortunately, he, he was taken out later and so he could survive. But he had a very hard time, of course. <coughs> so, as you know, 15 minutes after class started, uh, I happened to see outside the window. It was a beautiful sunny day. As you know, it's a very hot day. Beautiful day and a blue sky. And when I looked up, I could see two American boomers B-29 flying very high in the air. Actually, there must, must have been three or four planes, but I remember two of them, yeah. One might have already dropped the bomb and left. I have got no idea. Well, that morning, a lot of citizens witnessed those planes. Yeah. Uh, even some of my friends said, we witnessed a small parachute from the B-29 bomber. That was maybe the parachute for uh, a small device for observation, yeah, something like that. You know. <coughs> but we didn't pay much attention on them anymore. Well, those days, we didn't, ha we didn't have any more uh, fighter planes to attack them anymore, no Japanese planes, yeah. and even anti-aircraft guns. Pum, pum. Uh, they can't reach so high, <laughs> over 10,000 meters, very high. So American planes were flying at any time at their will. I don't remember even there was an air raid warning or not. I don't remember. I just thought, oh, they are flying again for reconnaissance or routine work. And I just thought, beautiful planes shining in the morning sun. Uh, silver white plane, see? Oh, I remember, oh, ice cakes. <laughs> oh, stupid boys. Who knows, they were messengers from the hell. But the, the next moment, uh, when I turned my eyes back to the textbook, there was a moment of explosion. Very strong flash. Yeah. Uh, attacked me. And of course, big shock wave of explosion. And heat, heat wave. These things attacked me at the same moment. Whole world turned to these something Sunset world. Please try to imagine strong shock wave, <coughs> yeah, strong flash, and heat wave in a moment. Ah. Wow. Two kilometers position. The heat must have been much lower than the center. You know, the, of course, other than degrees Celsius here, I hear that I am melt 1,500 degrees. Well, many people must have been melted. Well, even in this point, I felt hot. But that, that moment, everything was decided, each of us, all the citizens, where you were, inside the building or out in the streets, or even in the shadow or not, that made a big difference. 
from coach. But I felt it was bombing and I covered my ears and eyes and jumped under the desk. Then huge noise followed, hundreds of thunders, big noise. And this time, whole world turned to real dark. Yeah. What do you say, pitch black? Midnight. So I was just crawling around the floor like a blind. Yeah. We had a horrible time. And of course I felt I'm dying, I'll be killed. You know. My whole body was bleeding from head to feet. Yeah. And shirts were torn, and trousers were torn. Were real miserable. I'm dying. I pray the Buddha help me and help me, mother, or things like that. Yeah, and it's very strange. This time it was so quiet. No voices, no sound. You see, there were many boys, but no one screamed. They didn't have any voice, no voice. Maybe everyone was busy to take care of himself. <coughs> yeah. I still can't understand. Deadly quietness. So, in, in the uh, silent world, dark world, I was just crawling around the floor, uh, real like a blind. Horrible time. For one minute, two minutes, <laughs> or longer, and then I don't know. But soon, dim light came in, and. I could understand that the whole structure of the roof or ceiling fell on our head. But fortunately, fortunately, the floor was top rather, and we could survive anyway. Well, I was bleeding from head to feet, whole body, but later I understood my injury was not so serious. Very fortunate, again, you see. I was bleeding, but they all caused by a lot of small cuts by the window pane, you see. Uh, but my bones were okay and I could move. You know. Yeah, thank Buddha. Yeah. And fortunately, we were inside the building and we were not burned. How lucky. So, my seat was close to the door, and somehow I could sneak out of the building. You see, at that time, everyone thought one bomb was dropped beside me. And we didn't have any idea about such a big bomb those days. And everyone thought one bomb was dropped beside me. Only two bombers, you see. <laughs> so I also felt, hey, Americans dropped the bomb beside me. <laughs> I was so angry. <laughs> yeah. But you see, when I got out of the building, I was so shocked to see all the school buildings had been smashed badly. And there were so many students wounded sitting on the, on the grass, lying. Most of them were so badly wounded, obviously broken bones or big cuts or bleeding. No one was in an ordinary shape. So I wondered, hey, what happened? <laughs> Only two bombers, what did they do? I had no idea. I didn't know what a hell in the central area of the city at that time. At that time, one of my friends, this guy had a big cut on his head, asked for help and leaned on my shoulder. So I, talk, 
I tied his head with towel, and I thought of taking him to the Red Cross Hospital, which was located about 300 meters to the north of our school. So both of us walked out of the school gate. Then again, we were shocked to see all the houses had been so badly destroyed, smashed. Roof tiles and debris scattered around here. And you see, there was a, a streetcar road near our school, big streetcar road. But you know, streetcars had already stopped here and there. And the electric pole fell, wires dangling. Yeah. So we couldn't understand what happened. And we saw this direction. Fires had already started in the whole city. Just smoke and smoke. In the streetcar road, big crowd of smoke whirling. And especially, we were so shocked to see so many people were coming and walking <coughs> along this road this way. You understand, they were the people bombed in the central area. They uh, intended to evacuate out of the city to every direction, right? That's why I witnessed hundreds, hundreds of them were coming and walking this way. Now everyone, they were so miserable. Wow, their hair stood straight up. Maybe because of the shock wave of explosion, right? Some had lost the hair, burned and gone. And many of them had been so badly burned from head to feet. Well, their skin were charcoal gray skin peeling from their faces, arms, whole body. Their clothes were torn and singed. Some were almost naked, leaving just some cloth around their waist. Some of them had swollen up like peeps. You see, their skin was peeling and hanging from their chin or arms. Well, I, I could see red skin under their peeled skin. You see. Ah, their faces were like baked pumpkins. And without exception, they held out their arms forward this. Maybe because of pain, I think. And they were walking slowly in a long line, no shoes. Yeah. So I couldn't understand why are they so badly burned from head to feet? And they were walking slowly in a long line. Well, but you see, that day, all day long, wherever I went, I had to see these people everywhere. Oh, so I just couldn't understand what happened. I don't think many of them could live longer after that. They are miserable. Maybe you saw the mannequin in the museum. I say she is in good shape. The reality was far worse than her. So somehow we could get to the Red Cross Hospital. But the hospital, the front yard was full of those burned or wounded people. No help. Even doctors and nurses were wounded. Yeah, one or two of them were doing something, but I told my friend, hey, no help around here. Let's go back to school. Oh, this 
guy was later that morning he was picked up by a rescue truck which came from the harbor at the foot of this small bridge and here he was sent sent to the harbor to another island after all he could survive but uh, that was uh, almost everything just after the bombing I witnessed. I couldn't go in into the sanctuary area. We are hell. Maybe you understand uh, what kind of a situation. Well, in a moment, why well, at summer morning, the whole city turned to real hell. As you know, weak and flammable Japanese houses were destroyed in a moment, and the people were buried under the debris. People couldn't get out and got burned <coughs> and killed. Naturally, people had to, had to run away, leaving their loving ones under the destroyed houses. Mothers told their children, run away, leave me here, fire is coming. And this kind of tragedies happened everywhere in the city, naturally. Those people I witnessed, these days I think they were okay still, they could walk anyway. But many people couldn't walk anymore, naturally. Many of them were killed in a moment in the street around here. Otherwise, they just crawled to the riverside asking for water and dead beside the rivers or drowned in the water. That's why for many days after that, the rivers were full of the bodies and they went up and down according to the movement of tide. People who came into the city, city the next day, they had to witness piles and piles of bodies, naturally. But I didn't go, go in uh, here. Whole city was burning. What did I do after that? Yeah. Breathing had already stopped. Yeah, how fortunate I was. And I stayed at school for a while, but, uh, well, these days I uh, reflect on myself, you know. Oh, I should have worked for a rescue work or things like that. But this 16-year-old thoughtless young boy just wanted to get out of the city. <coughs> to my mommy's home. So I decided to leave the city and cross this bridge. Well, both sides of the river, whole city was burning and a big cloud of smoke rising high. So I felt, oh, Hiroshima is dying. Uh, Americans invented such a big bomb. Uh, we can't win this war. But uh, I never believed in surrender either. <laughs> and I walked and walked and back to the dome. Oh, the dome had been smashed. Hiroshima station was burning. No trains were running anymore. So I had to walk and walk all this way. One station, two station. Over 10 kilometers there, yeah, I walked and walked. And all the way, I had to see these people. So in the evening, I got on the rescue train and two, three more stations and got off the train started walking, 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 and I reached home around midnight, my mommy's home. Well, but you see, 
again, I was very fortunate having a place to go back home anyway. See? But many people mom here didn't have any places to go. And many of them went to the elementary schools in the suburbs or shrines or temples. And these places were full of those wounded or burned people that night, just asking for water, water, water in the dark. You see, and before the next morning came, many of them were dead. They are hell. So people who came into the city, city the next day for rescue work, they were busy to dig holes to bury them. Uh, well, in my case, fortunately, I could get home to my mommy's home. And, oh, yes, yeah, she was very pleased to see me, of course, you see. Well, she was working in the rice field that morning, and she saw the mushroom crowd among the mountains. And you know, rumors went out, Hiroshima was bombed by a big bomb, and people were dead. And she had believed me dead. <laughs> so you see how she was pleased to see me. Oh, you are alive. <sighs> but you know, be from the next day, I became very ill, high fever and a diarrhea. <coughs> you see, that was the immediate after effect by radiation, I think. But you know, I left the city very soon after the bombing, and I didn't stay long. That means I didn't influence by radiation long time. That was very good. So one week or 10 days after that, I could recover. Yeah. And I'm still alive even today. That's Buddha. <laughs> yeah. People didn't know anything about radiation. Nuclear bomb. Who knows about that? Very strange bomb. But you know, uh, <coughs> people who were not born in the city and came into the city the next day for rescue work or looking for uh, their relatives. And some people stayed in the city for a couple of days or longer. Now these people were affected by radiation when they were home. So you can't tell a man's fate. I was very lucky. And unfortunate guys became ill. And even small number of them were dead. Well, uh, suddenly people became ill with uh, strange symptoms, like losing hair or bleeding from gums, or high fever, or diarrhea, or many spots on their bodies. Hmm. And even doctors didn't know how to deal with this. We just named A-bomb diseases, that's all. No medicine, yeah. In those days, shortage of all kinds of medicine. No effective and effective treatment at all. Yeah, so people were dead one by one. And as you know, over 140,000 were dead in that year, 1945. Even after that, yeah, as you 
children or leukemia or many kinds of cancers started and people were dead. Uh, long, many years, even many years after death, people became ill. They are horrible. And as you know, uh, uh, pregnant ladies gave birth to the crippled babies or mentally retarded children. Yeah, recently I heard about a 95 years old father is taking care of his 60 or 5 year old mentally retarded sons. What a tragedy it is. And his mother was dead a couple of years ago. Can you imagine? 95 year old father is taking care of his boy even today. Yeah, many kinds of tragedies everywhere in this city. So I was one of the most fortunate survivors, I think. Yeah, many of my my friends lost many people. One of my friends lost six people in his family. This guy was working in the suburbs that morning and he couldn't come home that day. His house was around here, his about well, one kilometer, no, 500 meters something to the east of the explosion center. And he couldn't come home that night. Hiroshima was burning. So a couple of days after that, he came back home. Not home. The place his home was. Only to find six bodies. Six bodies? No. Six skeletons. Bones. His parents, brother and sister and grandma mother and something. Even today, <laughs> he doesn't want to talk much about uh, I, I understand how sad he is. And as you know, very unfortunately, that morning, a lot of school children were working in the central area. You know that? Yeah. Seventh grade equivalent boys and girls, 12 or 13 years old, kids. Yeah. yeah, I remember a lot of children were walking like this that morning. At that time, I wondered what were these guys doing this morning? But now I understand. They, they had started working at 8 o'clock. Central area to demolish houses and put aside roof tiles or debris and clean, and they intended to make fire preventing zone. Yeah. They had to be mobilized that morning. Over 7,000 boys and girls, very bad. No more A-bombs, never, I believe so. Well, that's almost all I can tell you. I hope you could understand my poor English. <laughs> if you have any questions. <coughs> well, what happened about me after that? I was born to be an engineer and I was in the technical college, but because of some reasons I didn't go back to school. And the next year I entered the normal college and three years after that I became school teacher. And I used to teach in this city over 45 years and retired. And I'm still alive anyway. Yeah. Thank Buddha. <laughs> and many people ask.
asked me what happened to my brothers. And yeah, fortunately, both of my brothers could come home in safe. So my mother was very happy. <coughs> no war, no more wars, no more A bombs. Okay? Yeah. So, I hope you are going to visit Himeji this afternoon. Himeji Kuno? <laughs> Himeji Castle. Very beautiful. Yeah. Well, would you please leave me your name and your country in my notebook, okay? Yeah.